This should be interesting. It's an electronic alternative to a traditional bimetallic lamp flasher for cars. Because in the old days, the lamps used to pass current through a little heater in these units. And the heater would uh, heat a bimetallic strip, would then click the switch. The lamp would go out, the heater would cool down, then it would click back on. And it gave that distinctive clicking and the lamp would flash on and off. However, modern LED lamps uh, pass much lower current and won't work with that. Uh, it may just not heat the biometallic strip up to the point of actually clicking the lamp off at all. So there is this electronic alternative. But what's intriguing about this is that it only has two terminals. So when, the, you know, when it's effectively shunting out to bring the lamp on, uh, it has to power itself momentarily while it's doing that. That is probably the most interesting bit here, getting a capacitor. Um, it's worth mentioning I've tried LED lamps in this. And, well, let me just grab an LED lamp right now and show you what happened. So I shall stick an LED lamp in. This one will do. And I'll just pop the cover off this uh, light, this little illuminated button. Stuff this in. And the LED lamp is glowing dimly, but not flashing. That's what it was supposed to fix, but it doesn't. And I found that if you get a resistor set to about, say, 1K, and you put it across it, it will then operate, because it needs the current. It must be the voltage drop across the LEDs. That is quite interesting. Intriguing. I think we have to explore it further. So let's get this open. I shall turn the power off to the unit. Oh, I should have mentioned, there is a potentiometer underneath. You can change it from quite a fast flash to the standard sort of vehicle flashing speed. The indicator flashing speed. I shall pop this lamp back in here. My little bag of LED lamps. And I'll stuff it over there, out the way. Right, let's get the leads out the way and the spudger in. Here is the spudger. This is also polarity conscious, which I, I would expect. If you connect it the wrong way, the lamp just stays lit all the time. Ugh. Right, okay. First hurdle, first hurdle. Maybe, maybe this is beyond the abilities of the spudger because it is quite heavy. Oh no, it's not. The spudger has won again. What do we see? Actually, you know what? And I just take the picture of this and reverse engineer it. I see a couple of capacitors, I see the potentiometer, I see the MOSFET, um, and a transistor by the look of it, unless it's a special function flasher chip, not really sure. I hope it's going to be a really simple circuit, especially the capacitors. Right, tell you what, I shall reverse engineer this. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. What a bizarre circuit, because it combines a very modern MOSFET with a very old-fashioned transistor called a programmable unijunction transistor. I have not seen one of these in a product for a long time. I didn't even know they made them in surface mount packages. It's just called UABJ. I'm, I'm not sure I couldn't find anything online for that. How strange. But anyway, uh, things worthy of note. The timing capacitor is this big one down here. It's 100 microfarad. Well, I think it's 100 microfarad. I haven't actually desoldered the circuit board to find out, and it is right up against that. But it measured as round about that in circuit. That's not a guarantee of accuracy, though. But 100 microfarad seems like a good value. There is a little 3.3 microfarad capacitor, too, and that's purely just a sort of, like, presumably to avoid glitches and noise interfering with the circuitry. Uh, there is the potentiometer that forms part of a potential divider. Um, uh, MOSFET and the programmable unijunction transistor, that is more or less it. Let me bring in the schematic so, to show you this. Here is the schematic. I'll zoom down now. I've put a programmable unijunction transistor here just because, well, it's something that you may want to look up. It's an oddity. The first time I came across these was in... Uh, Fairground, DC fairground controllers, they were providing a clock pulse because this is one of the things they're used for, for triggering thyristors because they can fire quite high current pulses. I've also found them in uh, cold rooms. In cold rooms where you had an emergency button that if you got trapped in the cold room, if the handle came off, the door jammed, 
you had a button inside, you could press the button, it would sound an alarm outside to get attention to have people come and rescue you from the cold room. You don't want to get stuck in a freezer room because uh, you wouldn't survive long. Um, but it had a flashing LED, and this is another function for this. It's ideal for a very low current LED flasher. In this instance, they just had it tapped across the button so that uh, the current wasn't enough to, it was my cramps, enough to trigger the sounder, but it would make the little red LED flash. Interesting. With instructions saying, do not use uh, silicon sealant, the acid curing stuff, anywhere near this button because it will actually corrode the contacts. So here we go. We have two connections. We have the plus, which goes to the 12 volt battery side, and we have the load, which temporarily acts as a negative via the lamp. The current flows through this diode when the lamp is off, and this capacitor is the little filter capacitor, and it starts charging up this capacitor here. The programmable unijunction transistor is an odd thing. It's almost like a thyristor, but with a programmable voltage trigger. You set a voltage on the gate of this. So there's the gate, there's the anode, and there's the cathode. You set a voltage on the gate with your potential divider, and when the voltage at the anode exceeds that by about 0.6 of a volt, it will trigger. And once it triggers, it latches on, and it stays on until the current flowing through it drops to about 100 microamps. The valley current. In this case, the MOSFET is normally held off by this 4.7K resistor, 4K7. Uh, I've mixed up terminology, like 1.2K. I could have written 1K2. Uh, I could have also written, you know, 4.7K, but I'm not sure why I did that. Oddities. I tend to use them interchangeably. But normally the MOSFET is turned off by this resistor pulling its uh, gate to the zero volt rail, or what is effectively zero volt rail. And you set the speed with this potentiometer, and it's the point at which that capacitor will have charged up to a specific voltage that then it, d it trips the programmable unijunction transistor, and that then starts dumping the current from this capacitor um, down through this resistor. But in doing so, raises the voltage of the uh, MOSFET to the point it turns on. And when it does turn on, it shunts the positive and the load, bringing on the lamp. Uh, and that at that point, no more current flows through this uh, diode, but it doesn't matter because it is actually this capacitor here that's now running the show. It's uh, continuing to discharge through the programmable unijunction junction transistor, the PUT, um, until the current goes so low through this resistor that it cuts off. And when it does cut off, um, then the MOSFET turns off and that capacitor starts charging up again. And what I showed you earlier on about the uh, LED, if you have a number of LEDs in series in a lamp, say three or four, uh, in one of these 12 volt lamps, then they won't, little resistor there as well, although some of them don't, some of them use four LEDs and no resistor, then that will introduce a voltage drop and it, the capacitor may never reach the uh, the point at which the uh, programmable U-junction transistor can turn on. So in this case, just sticking a resistor across that, 1K would probably be ample in most instances, but you can play about with that if needs be. That will then effectively drop that voltage. It will then more or less go to the full 12 volts across here, and it will work reliably again. So here's the odd thing. The thing that I find most pleasing about the circuit is this is a very modern component. This is a very ancient component. I am so surprised to see that in a circuit, particularly a mass-produced component. I guess they must still be available. Uh, the programmable unijunction transistor versus the traditional unijunction transistor the, which preceded it. The unijunction transistor just had a fixed internal resistive divider. The programmable one brought that connection out and just let you choose that voltage so you could vary it on the outside. But a fascinating circuit. Very fascinating just purely because A, it shunts itself out when it's actually lighting the lamp and uh, also because of its use of that hybrid mixture of uh, components from different eras. So that is uh, quite useful. As you saw me using it uh, for flashing a LED button, that's a, a very easy addition to that. It is polarity conscious if you get the polarity the wrong way around because of the inherent diode in a uh, MOSFET, the lamp will just light all the time. I'm not sure these diodes are rated for that current all the time. 
But uh, if you do that, it will just light all the time. If you see that happens, then uh, swap the connections. It is marked B and L, uh, battery and load, I'd guess. But pretty neat. Very interesting little device.